On today's show, he's a bass addict by the name of Aaron. He's only 19 years old, but don't let his age fool you. He's one of Minnesota's leading bass anglers. This is obedient plant. And a close encounter with a colorful bloom inspired one Minnesota woman to go wild about wildflowers. Oh, look who's out of there. Then he's taking the lead on this one. And how about trying to mow your lawn with one of these hot rods? Don't miss hitching a ride on one of the fastest growing hobbies in Minnesota. And our Minnesota Bound Classic this week takes place in Brainerd, Minnesota. If you're in this area, you know the go-to fishing guide by the name of Harry Good. Those stories and more, next. Oh, this is a lot of people coming to the Lakes Bar nowadays. Look at that. Minnesota Bound. Brought to you by Minnesota Select GMC Dealers. Hi everybody, Raven and I welcome you to the show. We're going fishing today with a young man named Aaron who is a certified bass addict. And boy, can he catch them. I'd say we picked a real good day, Ron. <laughs> Aaron Teal may not be your typical teenager, but he is your typical bass fisherman, totally hooked. Let's get after it, huh? Yeah. Get after it to Aaron means hot pursuit of a Minnesota largemouth bass, a fish with many addictive traits. My whole life, I've been a tackle fanatic. I think, I think every bass fisherman is something about just lures that just kind of excites you every time you see a new one. We're kind of on the one edge of it. The top is actually kind of, it tops out at like three, but this whole area is just, I've been fishing it my whole life and it's just, it's really special to me. I used to go out with my grandpa a lot. He's the one who really taught me how to fish. I don't know what it was about it, but I just really fell in love. Love means never having to say they're not biting. You know, your generation, all you're supposed to do is uh, look at the video games and uh or uh, follow jockstrap sports, you know? It's kind of fun to see a young guy like you uh, into what I like. It's a pretty little bass. <laughs> he is a fishing maniac, I'll say that. And ever since he was little, um, he'd be begging to go out fishing. We just always supported him with his fishing and did everything that we could. I know we, when we first started going to his tournaments and things, we had no idea that anything like that even existed. So his dad and I would look at each other and say, did you ever think that we'd be standing here at a bass weigh-in? Aaron was all of 13 years old when he first entered a bass tournament and he remembers the results. It was very humbling. I, right when I thought I knew my home lake, I fished a tournament out there, and I think we finished middle of the pack. Let's just say his fishing luck has gone up, really up. Yeah, I have a bunch of flax in my room. I've won a few, and I have taken a lot of, I've taken a lot of top tens and cashed a lot of checks. I don't know, it never seems to be good enough for me, but I'd say I've done okay. Got one. Back on the water in a bass boat Aaron bought with his own money, Aaron's passion for bass comes oh, with yeah. every cast. Beauty, it's a dandy. Just something about cracking into a bass, it's, it's nothing like any other. You have a nickname, Aaron the Jig Man? Ah, uh, Aaron the Jig Man. Aaron no. the Bass Man? I don't think I have a nickname. You can make one for me if you want, Ron. <laughs> now a student at the University of Minnesota Duluth, Aaron keeps plugging. I have a website actually called AaronTeal.com. It's got pictures and it says my schedule. You can kind of follow what I'm doing. And then I actually write blogs for uh, shields.com. That's oh, a sow. Yeah. That's a sow. Meanwhile, Aaron's Ooh favorite fish wow. was in a biting <laughs> mood for everybody oh, in the boat. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah. Huh? Yeah, hold that one up for him. Boy, she hit that. Bam. 
Now that's what you call a sow bass. Sow, in this case, is a compliment. But the young angler wasn't to be outdone. Oh, 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 you're hot, man. Oh, he's in with the weeds. It's another healthy fish. Whoa. Lip my baby there. Oh, oh yeah. Look at that sow. <laughs> And so it goes when in the company of a bass addict, old or young. Keep fishing, keep dreaming. If the pro fisherman doesn't happen, then I'd, I'd at least like work with fishing, whether it's for a company or um, being the next Ron Shara. Or... <laughs> Have you got a dog? <laughs> <laughs> I guess I need to get one. Hey Aaron, how about a bass wearing a red bandana? <laughs> Up next, find out what's blooming as we hit the wildflower fields with a local Minnesotan who made her mark with her own wildflower field guide. Minnesota Bound, brought to you by Minnesota's select GMC dealers. Renewal by Anderson. Seven Clans Casino, Connecticut, and by Rapala. Welcome back. You know, there's an old saying that goes something like, stop and smell the roses. Well, we have the wildflower lady who stops and smells the wildflowers and knows them all too. This place has been restored and this is what it used to look like 100 years ago, 150 years ago. It's just amazing. Katie Chaika spends many days walking open meadows, but it's what she knows about those places that might surprise you. Here we've got some St. John's wort. This is a, a native spirea bone set. Down here, this little pink thing down here. I don't know if you can see that. That's an agalenus. Well, you know, if you just look in this area right here, I mean, we have some 20 species scattered around in just a square yard. Here, right here, is uh, Lulobelia. It started out back in about 2005. This is obedient plant. I started walking around the neighborhood, just this purple wildflower just caught my attention and I said, what a pretty flower, I wonder what it is. From there I just took my digital camera, my cheap little Kodak and took it down the park and started photographing all the different wildflowers I could find and tried to ID them and that was where it come into a bunch of brick walls because there was so few reference material for things that are specific to Minnesota. Struggling to find answers, Katie decided it was time for a change. I said, well, somebody's got to do it for Minnesota. It might as well be me. She began to research each flower and build a website to record her findings. Minnesotawildflowers.info. A website dedicated to Minnesota's wildflowers, particularly how to identify them. And it launched in March 2007 with about 15 species documented and photographed and everything ready to go at that time. 15 was enough to start. Within two years, she had listed 300 flowers, an incredible database. Most people, when they're first starting out and trying to learn stuff, they try to look things up by color. Oh, I like this one. The whole thing was designed to help people ID plants because I struggled with it so much myself. In 2009, Katie got a boost. She met Peter Juck, a man who shared her passion. We met on a field trip with the Native Plant Society. By the end of that year, he decided to jump on board the website. Peter brought with him 50,000 images. If you click on the enlargement, you get a little slideshow. So I had this large collection. 50,000 images was a real big help. <laughs> The macros on them are really, really good. You really fill out your catalog using both cameras. It's really grown a lot since then. We've got better quality images. I got a better camera. 
He's taught me a few things about how to take outdoor images. I do the editing, I crop some, I might brighten them up if the lighting was not optimal. Massage them as little as possible, upload them to the website. We do write-ups describing the flower, describing the leaves, describing the habitat, when it blooms, plant height, general habitat, all these things about the plant to help people idea. People want to know, it fills a need. You know, what is this world we live in? And that's what botany is all about, what it's been always about. What is this world we live in? What are these things around us? Sometimes the answers are surprising. About 20% of the plant species you find out in the wild are not native. Some of them are garden escapees. Somebody planted something nice in their garden and it jumped the fence and ended up in a ditch somewhere and has just been spreading. Finding Minnesota's native wildflowers might not be easy, but thanks to Katie, naming them will. It's become more or less my life now. <laughs> Ever seen a lawnmower that goes this fast? Better not try to mow your lawn with these hot rods, or maybe you should. Closed captioning is brought to you by By the Yard, premier manufacturers of maintenance-free outdoor patio furniture and accessories from recycled plastic. the yard maintenance free furniture comfort elegance and recycling combined call today for your free catalog or go online to buytheyard.net okay time to confess i really don't like sitting on a riding lawnmower but our next story has me possibly changing my mind. Are you ready to rumble? Ho oh, hum, mowing the lawn. Oh, poking along. Not too exciting, huh? And I never go very fast. Uh, don't be so sure. Oh yeah! Holy grass clippings! Would you believe racing lawnmowers? The Minnesota Lawnmower Racing Association is in its sixth year. Six years of turning everyday lawnmowers into racing machines. We call it grass car because it's poor man's NASCAR, so it's grass car. We check the tire pressures, we check the toe in, we check everything. It's just like racing a car. This is a stock 12 and a half horse. It has an all St. Croix chassis frame on it. Electric start, kill switch. It's got tether cords that you have to have your tether on. We have to go through inspection. Everything is checked. According to these folks, the sport is catching on, and not just boys with their toys. Um, it's different. Not a lot of people know about lawnmower racing. I know that I tell all of my friends about it, and they're like, what? What are you talking about? Lawnmower races? Sadie went around and she's asked the guys, the older guys, if they'll come out and give her a little competition. She is the only one in that class. Visors down, feathers up. Okay, here we go. Oh, look who's out of there. Sadie's taking the lead on this one. Sadie gonna make her move, coming up on the inside. As we're moving down into lap number four, she has finally taken the lead. Is she gonna hold it? Once Sadie has her first victory, it's time for the next class to start. And some of these racers, well, they've been around the yard a time or two. Yeah, I'm one of the oldest members of the Minnesota Lawnmower Racing Association. It's, it's crazy, it's, it's just a lot of fun. Uh, I take it a little easy because I don't want to uh, get hurt. I'm too old to break a bone or two. People say, well, a lawnmower? Well, these lawnmowers do anywhere from 20 to 60 miles an hour. 60 miles an hour? The fun we have afterwards, the jokes everybody plays with everybody. Well, let's be honest, uh, this started April Fool's Day. So um, you can take it as serious as you like or you can take it as, you know, fun as you want. We race for bragging rights and trophies only. When the races end, it seems everyone is a winner in more ways than just trophies. Remember, the grass also keeps growing. Nice, Waller. 
His name is Perry Good. He's a fishing guide and he's very good. We'll tag along oh, with yeah, him right. to see what's biting. There we go. Holy smokes. Minnesota Bound, brought to you by Hennepin County Medical Center. Minnesota Agricultural Water Resources Coalition. Minnesota Soybean Farmers and their checkoff. Time now for our Minnesota Bound Classic. You know, it's no secret Minnesota is full of very talented and skilled anglers. Well, here's a story about one. He's good, and guess what? His name is the same, Perry Good. In the land of 10,000 lakes, walleyes lurk below the surface. Nice walleye. We love our Minnesota State fish. About a 16 and a half, 17 incher. And this guy, well, he may be Minnesota State fisherman. And most folks don't even know him. I get excited when the fish are biting and you got nice weather. Perry Good lives for days on the water, and he thrives on that oh so familiar tug. It's a very tough business. Not exactly what we're looking for, but. Perry's what you'd call a pro fisherman. He gets paid to catch fish and try and win tournaments. He's been at it since the Pro Walleye Trail kicked off back in 1990. You know, talked over with my wife and decided to give it a try. And she, she said she'd give me five years to see what I could do. Perry placed in the money his first few tournaments. And I guess the rest is history. A history that now hides in the basement cupboard. This is another first place tournament from Mille Lacs. Ian Fisherman considers Perry the top professional walleye fisherman of all time. That's right, all time. More successful than the likes of Al Lindner, even Perry's buddy, Gary Roach. That really doesn't mean anything. You're only as good as your last tournament, really. Perry says he succeeded in competitive fishing because of a couple of things. First, his wife, Patty. Roach told me a long time ago, he goes, you got a good one there, you better hang on to her. Another big part of his success. This is good. One mean chop on Perry's favorite lake, Mille Lacs. Okay, you can drop her here. And a darn good anchor. But I do relate fishing all the time to the weather. A brisk west wind on this day tells Perry we should catch Mille Lacs Lake walleyes anchored in five feet of water using slip bobbers. Right through the sucker. That's where you want to hook them. A lot of the guys in other states, they kind of laugh when they see us bobber fish here, and they, they refuse to do it. You know, Crazy, the maybe. And, there you go. There's a good one. <laughs> if my pull is low in the water. <laughs> but it sure seems to work. Well, you found him. He actually might be a, a keeper. There we go. Nice fish. Boom! That's another good fish. I fish against myself, really. I mean, I, I know that all I have to do is go out and catch a limit of fish each day of the tournament, and I'll be fine. Another perfect yeah, tournament fish. I happen to get a good, couple of good ones in, in there, I'll be in the top 10, and you know, and if you're in the top 10 enough, sooner or later you win a few too. Look at how fat he is. Yeah, that's a pretty fish. Look at that. Nice fish. Woohoo! Oh, yeah. Whoa. There's you a thought we were going to get lucky in this spot? <laughs> For Perry, two decades of competitively catching walleyes has taken a toll. That's a great fish. In a tournament, that's a throwback yeah, here. <laughs> I'm 50 years old now, and the hard thing is early in the year, like when it's like 35 degrees and either snowing or raining, and, and you got to go out in six footers. I don't need that anymore. Perry gets his kicks fishing with kids from Brainerd's Camp Confidence. I really get more fulfillment out of doing that than I do winning a tournament. But and don't be fooled. Minnesota's walleye fisherman still glows. I got a bite. Oh, yeah. Each time that bobber drops. Oh, oh look at this. <laughs> it's still a no nice fish. No wonder. <laughs> <laughs> Man, that's right. There we go. Holy smokes. That's one for the ages. <laughs> Tell you what, along with the muskies here on Mille Lacs, I mean, this is, this is a lot of people come to Mille Lacs for nowadays. Look at that. 
That's a football. Yeah, it is. Say it's good to be good. It's good to be good. <laughs> and I wish I had all of their secrets, huh? We'd all catch more fish. Well, that about does it for us. Remember, introduce a kid to the great outdoors, take him fishing. I'm Ron Sharon, of course, always the star of the show. Are you listening to me? Is Raven. Transportation provided by Premier Transportation. Call 1 800 899 7433. For more information on these stories and more, catch us on the web at mnbound.com.